Welcome back to Music Why Not. You are watching our South by Southwest takeover. Today I'm here with Wyland. How are you guys? Great, how are you doing? Great. You guys just uh, were in the Yeah. So, how does it feel to finally unleash new music that you've been working on so hard? It feels really good. It was, uh, it's, always, uh, it's always tough when you're a band and you're uh, sitting on songs that you're really excited about, you know? Um, so it felt good to finally get it out there. I kind of like to go back into the roots of a band. Sure. I feel like it captures the essence really well. So can you guys tell me a little bit about how you guys came together to create music? Absolutely. Um, kind of began writing in 2013 uh, by myself. I didn't really meet these guys yet. I, know these guys. Uh, I met Chris first. Uh, one of the first shows that my uh, original group of Wyland band members were in, uh, played a show with his band. Um, they're called the Living in Time Machines. They're awesome. Uh, and uh, we became like mates right away. And uh, we toured up north where we met Zach in uh, and, uh our guitarist Maurizio, who isn't here right now, we actually met him on Craigslist. We uh, yeah, we were looking for a guitar player. And he was looking for a band, and uh, it was just kind of meant to be. With your music, I feel like sometimes as we grow older, we kind of fall into listening to what kind of we like, because as children, we listen to what we are exposed to at home. Totally. So for you guys, what was something you grew up listening to, and what is something that you kind of grew to? Sure. Um, for me personally, I, I grew up on Winter Skinner and U2, which are two very different bands. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm at a point now where I feel like I'm, uh, I'm being exposed to more. Uh, being in a band, you're being exposed to more and more music constantly. Uh, even like Chris's band, Living in Time Machines, it's like they brought so many different elements of genres to their music that it, it stuff like that opens me up as a songwriter. So I'm always constantly listening to a bunch of different things. And these guys are yeah, I, I remember listening to my mom had Matchbox 20 playing all the time at home. And it wasn't until I was like uh, 13 years old I broke my fever and I was laid up in my house for like six weeks to go to school. And my mom had like the radio on. She was listening to like a classic rock station. I started hearing with Pink Floyd, Genesis, and Rush, and all these bands, and I was like, what is this? So that got me to my love of music, and then I got into YouTube as well, me and Ryan connect on, on that level, so we bring a little bit of each of those flavors into the world. Yeah, for me it was weird. It's, um so I grew up in a Spanish household, so we listened to like a bunch of merengue and salsa, like nonstop, and then Jimi Hendrix on the other side. I mean, it was so weird. Uh, my dad's a huge Jimi fan, so uh, it was fun trying to mesh the two, uh, and I've tried that a couple of times, but I feel like I've tried with you guys. Now, did anything in particular inspire us to become a musician? Because the last one was different. I think there's a big difference between the epiphany of picking up an instrument. I remember just watching some videos on YouTube and be like, I want to play, I want to play uh, an instrument. My brother had a guitar. I'm like, well, bass makes sense. I'll, I'll pick that up. But I think I didn't realize I wanted to become a musician until I saw um, the entries in Boston. And they had so much energy, and I was like, I want to be a musician. I don't know if there was much of an epiphany for me. I kind of, I've always sang. Uh, I, I kind of relate my singing abilities back to, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with like a shop back, those huge vacuums. They just kind of buzz. Anything that like buzzed tonally, I, as a kid, I was just, just a match of the tone. So I feel like I was always singing and always messing around with like weird sounds that I could make and stuff like that. Replicating weird sounds, birds, weird stuff. Uh, and music just kind of kept it just happened. For me, I mean, I think it was, I never really considered it at all. I was gonna be like, I was trying to be like a doctor, a dentist, my doctor, or whatever. He is our dentist, my yeah, doctor. Yeah, 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 I just come with a bunch of random facts. He's like, um, Ryan, did you floss today? I'm like, no. Well, <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm a big proponent of uh, philosophy, by the way. So, 
I don't know, I kind of just, I didn't consider myself a musician until like 2014. Until like, yeah, like two years ago. Yeah. Uh, I was playing with this band called In Days from New York. And we just started playing a bunch of shows and it just happened, you know what I mean? And I, I feel like it was really cool because I, I just fell into it, to be honest. I've been playing music all my life and I never actually thought that I would make a life out of it or try to make money from it or whatever. But, I mean, it just happens. And I think that's the best part. I feel like it's, it just happens naturally. Going back to your album, you guys work with producer Pat Mills. We love Pat. Love Pat. Um, Pat is uh, located in the middle of nowhere, New Jersey, uh, otherwise known as Bayville. He's like a perfect example of somebody that just knows what they're doing. Um, he has, he can see anyone's vision and help you bring it to life. And that's what a good producer, that's what a good engineer is. And uh, he's a great guy, he's a great guy to work with. And uh, yeah, we, we just, he's like another member of Wild, you know? Like I feel like bands come across people that they love to work with and we couldn't have made Snake Hill without him or in a sea of things like said, we worked with him on both records. So he pushed us a lot. When we came in with a lot of ideas and we're open to different ideas, we can lay down a part and be like, oh, try that a little different, try to make that a little bit more live, try being a little bit more on the rhythm. And like, okay. And then wow that turned out to be a lot better. He's like, but he'll just be like, you can take it or leave it. Well, you take it. He knows what he's talking about. Uh, my favorite is between Tim and Tim Buck too. Uh, just something about that song transports me to a different universe, I guess. It's like, it's just so beautiful, it's just the way it flows and builds and I, just, I cry when I listen to it, still. <laughs> he has a tough time playing it. Yeah, I have to, to bring tissues on stage. <laughs> I remember telling you that I ended up falling asleep and waking up to the answer, like singing it and just falling in love with that song. So for me, I would say that song, but playing live, I feel like the most challenging and most fun is Lights Go Dark. I have to, yeah. yeah I like the more. <laughs> He's biased. I, I, I do, uh, I do specifically. I like Lost Boy a lot because I think it's, uh, it's very different. I like when we go outside of the box of what we're used to doing, and I feel like Lost Boy was, um, it was just a cool song to write. To play live, I know you said. Lights Go Dark is the best. Lights Go Dark is, is, it just, oh. There's, it. there's moments where I sing that and I'm like, I can't believe I can sing this high. <laughs> <laughs> there are good songs that are meant to like be heard in the world, but there are songs that are meant to be sing Yeah. It's one of those yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're definitely really proud of that one. It's a good song. Now we're going to get into a little bit of a fire round. So, um, All right, bring it. It's nothing intense. Okay, all right. I'm going to do What's your favorite record that you ever played? Your favorite record of all time? I'm between two. Um, the Blues Quadrophenia and Pink Floyd's The Wall, both double albums. I think the best in both bands are like, I'm always between those two records. I just think that the songwriting and the instrumentation on both of them, I think Quadrophenia is the best bass guitar record of all time. I'm the one with the star size of and that's one of the most acceptable albums ever made. Uh, I just, I love conceptual albums, I think we all do. Those records end up creating a history, you know, like a historical story that people can listen back and say, this is what was going on during that time. This is who was president, and this, or this is what world leader was there or there. Or even just the artists, I know like the Who album, Who by Numbers, the songwriting is very dark. People are like, well that's like a very dark time in the talents of his life. He had like nervous breakdowns and everything, and just like it's the other albums that bookended are completely different. So you get uh, just insight on that artist's mindset in 1975, 2007, whatever. Definitely got a radio inside of me right brand new. Uh, Continuing by John Mayer. And uh, what was the other one? Morning View by Do you guys remember your first recollection of Friday? To, like the village in my hometown. There was a band called Greenly Page that would play when we were younger. But I remember my first national headlining concert was Leonard Skinner in 2006. The first 
the concert that I saw everyone she was uh, Warp Tour 2003 in New Jersey. Uh, it was in Asbury Park, actually. For me, it was just like a, you know, it was like, well, I was, I was a metalhead growing up, so I listened to a lot of, like, just out of this world, grind core metal music, and uh, I went to one of those shows, and I cracked my sternum <laughs> in my first mosh pit ever. That was, that was interesting. That was my first show experience. It was pretty cool. If I could see any artists that are alive, it would have been probably ACDC, Bon Scott with Bon Scott before he passed away, or Led Zeppelin before the drummer died. Oh, so, so you guys, what would be an artist you'd like to play? I think Freddie Mercury was uh, not only the best vocalist of all time, but uh, one of the greatest songwriters. Just such a beautiful, beautiful soul, and uh, he's still missed. I've seen half of the Beatles, and I would like to see the other half of the Beatles. So I would say, I would see the full Beatles together, but I'd like to see at least John Lennon do his thing and George Harris do their thing. You guys ever heard of Mad Brains? I like Brad Brains. They're just wild. They're really wild on stage, and I would love to see that. And uh, uh, I'm not sure if they're still playing. Oh, man. Brad Brains, yeah, that's what they see. So to kind of finish off the interview, is there anything you'd like to say to people that stuff? Thank you so much for supporting us, uh, your friends, family, uh, fans. You know, you guys are. We wouldn't be able to keep doing what we're doing without you. You know, and uh, thank you for putting up with the bad shows, the good shows. We want to thank you guys for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you.